Okay, so uh, July 4th is now behind us. And to see what is ahead of us again, let's go ahead and take a look at the overall markets. And what I have up here, first and foremost, is the S&P 500. This is SPY that you're looking at right now. Going back before December 2024, I mean, you know, I've said this before. I've said this the last couple of weeks. We see this move to the upside. It is continuing. We are well above the 550 initial target. And we got to that a couple months early uh, because of just all of this inbound, uh, you know, coming into risk on assets. And I mentioned in last week's session that all eyes were on July 5th. And the reason why all eyes were on July 5th, and, and I really thought July 5th was going to be a volatile day, is because less people were going to be there to trade it because of the long holiday weekend. And with less people and less volume uh, creates more of this volatility that happens. Well, we did get some volatility on Friday, but it was to the upside because the, the jobs report was favorable. Okay. It wasn't the best jobs report. We did get higher jobs than anticipated, but not high enough where a rate cut could come off the table. And that's what spurred the uh, markets to move higher. So the economy is first and interest rate cuts are second right now when it comes to what the S&P is telling us. All right. Next resistance on the SPY is 580. Let's continue. Take a look at the bond market. Now, the bond market uh, coming into the 4th of July week and prior to that, we had seen the bond market where we, we were seeing a lower highs and lower lows. We were in this area here in the low 90s. Well, look what happened last week. We dipped all the way down into, and, and we're actually trading below 90 for at the first part of the week for uh, a bit, all right? And actually closed below 90. Um, the last couple of days leading up to the holiday week, we jumped up to around 92. So guess what? We are still below where we were when we first started talking about this. And we did see a, a, a move that took us below the 92 mark which we've come back to right now. So I think this is an initial area of resistance right now. We see the, the real resistance right around 95, but we're still on target going into November of the bond market actually falling back down below 90 into the 87 half area. That's what the targets say right now with contrarian charts. Looking at the cash market, the cash market agrees because Look what happened just a week and a half ago. We hit new highs for the year, um, getting above 29. Now, we have a target of around 29.55 to uh, the low 30s. So the average target we're looking at is back up to around 30. We haven't seen 30 since, well, right around COVID. And then we hit 30 again about a year afterwards. But since then, we've seen uh, the dollar back in the mid to high 20s. We've come out of that this year. It's just all been stiffening U.S. dollar against a basket of foreign currencies. We still see that uh, stiffening continuing up to near 30 for UUP. Oil markets, nothing new here other than the fact that we did see that, ex that, that move that we were expected to get up into 80s. We were looking at 82.50 to be touched. That's what's happened here. Uh, and we're getting close to a triple top, but we're also getting close to the end of the seasonal bull run. So we probably have about a week left on this one, if anything. And then after that, the seasonal bull comes off the table, and now it's all about trend. And to me, trend is up if and when we close above 83, 82 half, excuse me, 82 half on USO. GLD continues to be the surprise commodity for the year. Just when you think it's going to pull back at, at double bottom down here, uh, just around 212. We've climbed back up again, getting close to 220, 224, 224, 225-ish is the all-time high for GLD set back in April and then again in May. Are we going to get above that and close above that? You know, my mentor always used to tell me, when we knock three times on the ceiling, remember that song, knock three times on the ceiling if you want me? Well, knock three times on the ceiling if you want GLD to go higher, and that's exactly what we expect to have happen. You can only hit resistance so many times before a wave of buyers and a wave of people that are short run for cover. Uh, that would take us up into that area of around 242, 
to 262. Really, that 250, 252 is the average target for GLD. All right. Finally, let's talk about uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum here. So Bitcoin did something that we did not expect it to do. It broke below the 57 half barrier, and it's still trading below the 57 half barrier as we speak. Where is the next levels of support? You come back down here to where we were back in February, and we're back at 50,000. And lo and behold, 45 is the 38% retracement off of the moves that have happened here in 2024. Um, it, it's looking more and more like Bitcoin does want to try to find a new area of support. We'll see what happens. I mean, there was a, there was a big move down last week. Then there was a 6% move that happened to the upside over the weekend. We gave that back again over the weekend. And so far we're really trying to, right now it looks like we're consolidating somewhere in the 55 to $60,000 range. That's a big area of consolidation, but that's what we're seeing right now. The stronger of the two is Ethereum, but it hangs on by a thread looking at its support. And we're looking at support that happened in April or May down here around the 2850 area. Well, we tagged that uh, late last week and early this morning, uh, have bounced above that. I'd love to see us get back above 3000 on uh, on this um, and stay above 3000 here on ETH. We'll see where it is. It is above 3000 uh, as I snap this chart. But 2850 looks like the support level. If we, we drop below that, then we could crush lower. Um, we have approvals, a potential approval for a spot, ET, uh, a spot ETF for ETH. And I think that's going to hold this up here. Uh, that is supposed to happen. We're supposed to get some news about that later this month. So when you add it all up, folks, July 4th is behind us. We're now looking to Q2 earnings to take us through the summer. The trends are now up for stocks and commodities. July is a bullish month for stocks, but it turns bearish for oil. And finally, cryptocurrency is an outlier right now because that is the only asset that is on the low ends of its multi-month move. You got BTC and Ethereum at or below their multi-month lows.